Man, my hair is growing out of control. Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Evident Design. I just returned from a really epic journey through Southern Africa and Europe for some work and travel. You know, everything from climbing the mountains of Lesotho and surfing in Durban, South Africa, to uh, running around and looking at cool stuff in Prague and Vienna with some really awesome composer friends. So along the way, I was drawing a lot and a lot of you guys really liked the previous sketching video from my course and you guys wanted more of that style instead of just digital. So I thought I'd make another one just for you guys. So in this video, we'll look at ways of making your drawings look awesome. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that drawings and sketches can look really cool and artistic um, if you just go about it with a sense of looseness and fluidity. And this goes for practically everything that has to do with creative work. It's the same when I compose music for films and games. If I think too much about every single note and needing to have the perfect syncopation and harmonies and counter melodies, it would take forever to get somewhere and, you know, to become better. So. It's the exact same with art. If you tense up and start to really think a lot about each line and making sure the perspective is perfect and the lighting has to be perfect and so on, that frame of mind will set you back in the beginning. The second thing is to mix it up. Try using a regular pencil for the sketch and then on top of that you can fill in with some thick lines um, using an ink pen around the silhouettes and important features and other lines and areas of your drawings. Um, this can help your drawings to you know really pop out of the page which is kind of cool. You can also try using one of those paper stump shading pen thingies uh, to create some very soft and faded surfaces and shadows. I had so much fun with this technique when I was younger. Ugh, I sound old. I'm just 28, man. <laughs> Number three is do studies. I know I talk a lot about this, but trust me, it's such a good way of practicing and learning how to make your art look really nice. Just pick one of your favorite artists or games Find the artwork for that and, you know, even better, the sketches that the artist did and just copy it. You're not going to use this for anything. It's just about becoming awesome yourself. By doing studies and copying other amazing artists, you'll find your own ways and techniques by just doing it. You know, your, your mind is very crafty and it, it will find ways to achieve the results you want. So make it easy for yourself and just do studies. It feels great to have you know, to have drawn something that looks really cool on your own, even if it's another guy's or girl's design. Now let's sketch a bit and I'll show you some techniques along the way, keeping these things in mind. Okay, so I thought we could start sketching something, maybe not so simple, but it's it, it allows for a, a few um, like variations and stuff. And I, I was thinking about helmets, so something like, like warrior helmets, maybe fantasy thing, uh, similar to, yeah, th those uh, fantasy games that you see. So I'm going to start by sketching with a B pencil, like uh, last time, and um, I'm just going to be kind of loose and try out some different designs. And meanwhile, I'm going to talk about those three things that we talked about before, um, starting with being loose. So when, when I start doing sketches like these, I just like to, you know, just get some lines going because now, now there's a, it's a perfectly white and um, blank, you know, canvas, and um, it helps to get the creativity going when you just start sketching stuff. So let's do some. Let's just do something simple here. I'm not gonna do too crazy perspective. So just start with some simple like mask. I'm gonna add some horns and stuff on this. So I'm just letting my my pen go around a little bit. And I was thinking maybe having like several horns, so maybe we could have one there. Have a, um, one of these erasers here that um, you could. Um, form. Let me just get, take out a little bit of that. Let's do two horns like this. 
and just be loose. Let's always see the, the symmetry line. Like that. Maybe we can do Spikes there. Well, now it's gonna go go out there, but it's fine. Maybe we can make this broken, so <laughs> because my my page doesn't. I started painting or drawing on the wrong side, so now it's just like a broken horn. And um, when it comes to like different types of designs for helmets and any type of stuff like this, um, having a good visual library really helps. And I'm taking inspiration from like, you know, animal horns and some of these like gladiators from uh, the Roman Empire and, and things like that. And then just pushing that a bit more. So the gladiators had like these round eyes. Um, maybe we could start with like regular eyes. Go a bit like that maybe and then have like some some more round shapes like holes and I'm just being loose I can all oh. <laughs> it fell out um, I can always um, change around um, the design of this just erase it out and actually since this just fell out maybe Maybe I can try using one of these to illustrate the second point, actually, which is to be uh, not be loose to um, to sw to switch it up, like use different types of um, of tools. So this is just a regular um, graphite pencil that you can just put out like this, and then you don't have to sharpen these. So just continue with this one. I think this is zero point seven millimeters. Maybe I can raise these eyebrows, they look kinda wonky. And you can build your visual library by looking at real armor and maybe even from games, get inspiration from that. So here it goes up a little bit. Then just be loose, don't matter too much. So when it comes to like line weight, um, like the different types of lines I create, some are thicker, some are very thin. It, it's all about like focus and what you're trying to purvey with your, uh, with your expression, you know? So I like to add a little bit of line weight on the silhouettes. And this is quite, you know, it's, it's quite individual how, how you want to do it. But I like to, to emphasize the sort of a silhouette of the, of the shapes that I'm working on. So I, I add a bit more line weight there. Then I can add a bit more here in the root. And as it goes to being more, you know, spiky, I add less line weight there. Sitting at a little bit awkward angle here, but that's fine. And that's what's cool with these pens here is, is that uh, it'll always stay kind of sharp, and I can still tilt it to to add more like you know precise lines, more and more you know thicker, and so maybe this can have some more cracks. And try to switch it up with, in terms of um, um, how thick your lines are inside as well. So that'll give it more dynamic. And, and that's what I think sketching and drawing is all about. Adding this dynamic to, to your designs. Because if everything was like the same line weight, um, it wouldn't look that great. It would just look kind of flat. Maybe we could fill these in. 
because there are holes. And when it comes to symmetry, you always try to like look at the hole. So maybe you could see um, like this part maybe was like too far to the right. Then you can start like fixing that. Don't like uh, focus on one part alone uh, when you're doing symmetrical stuff. And it's good to start with a little bit simple, like this is straight from the, from um, uh, in front. And we can add some beard. Kind of looks like one of those Warhammer designs. And then add some a bit more line weight inside to make things kind of pop out a bit more, to be more in front. And switch up your shapes so so you don't only have like uh, uniform shapes but some are like big like this and some are smaller that would also add to the interest and to the dynamic of the of the picture and don't think too much about the individual strokes like i said before be loose just let it, let, let the lines flow and so uh, this is the the silhouette so we can add a little bit more line weight there and then maybe this part here is kind of thick or in front and i want to emphasize that we can add a little bit more so this should be some sort of hair or maybe like it's part of the mask we can add a bit more shadow to this it's darker and when i'm shadowing I like to to have like each part of the shadows to be sort of uniform, so I don't do like a like this, you know. So it's always always one one line or one direction. That'll make things look more uniform. And then inside, I can, I can actually start shadowing a little bit differently. Uh, we can try also to render this out a bit more. So let's say the light is coming from here. So this part would be a bit more, um, a bit more shadow. Also single directional. And then maybe around these holes, we could have, have it sticking out a bit. So it looks like it's like punctured on the blacksmith. And we can play with the shadows of these holes as well. So we said the light's coming from here, so maybe these parts here are a bit more in shadow. So it's from from the top, and then we can just add a little bit of shadow line there. And maybe this is a, a metal metal mask so or helmet so we could start adding a bit more contrast inside maybe even erase out some of that later and then let's start adding a bit more pressure And also, when things are in, in shadow, um, you generally want to have a bit more line weight there as well. So this part is in shadow, so maybe we could add a bit more there. And we can use the, um, the eraser for some pretty interesting effects, like um, let's add a bit more shadow here. And erase a little bit with this. Give it a bit of a shine. Them. And when it comes to metal, you kind of want to recreate uh, some of the shapes that you see because metal is pretty reflective and then it will reflect quite quite hardly if it's like pretty shiny. Make this part a bit more in darkness. 
And then so if I want this uh, part here to pop out a bit more, I can add a bit more line width there. So there's, maybe we can add a little bit more marks on this horn. Make sure we're following the perspective. Always be loose and then refine as you go. So that's the first helmet. We can do another one. Maybe I can do one in perspective. Let me show you that. Sorry about that, something happened with my recording. But yeah, so we're at this stage. And uh, maybe we could add or change this part here to make the eyes a bit better. We can make one of these crazy looking I mean, we could do like the Troy, Troy, uh, Trojan ones, where it goes down like this. Also about the visual library. So I can erase this part here. So that's his chin there. Just try things out, you know, maybe it doesn't work. I'm not sure I like these eyes so much. shoulder blade just trying things out We had some nice marks in here, some design. Just suggestive, you know. That's important to not over render things. Make things suggestive and loose. So you can always change them later. Not sure how much I like these horns, they don't really fit, so. Since I made it suggestive and just simple, I can take that away. Just continue playing around with the design. We add some shadow. I like these spikes on top here. 
Let's make the light come from the same way as the other one. And these are like round spikes, so I can add some shadow on this side. And sometimes I like to add a line where I want the shadow to be. So let's say I want more shadow on this part here. So I just add a line there and then fill that in. Okay, so now that we have two of these, I'd like to show you a bit, a few more techniques to um, like make it pop out a bit more, so it looks even better. Um, I mean, you could you could still use tools like you know the, the the pencil or the pen, and really make it thicker and darker. So this is like two B pencil, and I can go in here and really make it like some line weight darker and stuff, but. I also want to stress using or trying to use something like this, like a pilot fine liner, where uh, you can really fill in some some more stuff with this sort of ink, and and the ink actually doesn't go through the paper, which some uh, spirit inks does. So be sure to to buy a proper one that doesn't go through the paper. You can test it out in, in the store. So then I can go like maybe make a, a nice silhouette. We can start with this one here. So I can add this ink liner and not make it equally thick everywhere, but switch it up a bit. So like we said here, maybe make it a bit thinner there to make it look really spiky. And then here we can make it thicker. We can start with the silhouette. And there's different thicknesses of these. So I, this is pretty thin. Gives me some more space or uh, some more um, control. And here this is in shadow and I want that to really pop out. I can do that. And you can also add this thing inside. So like this, this part here, I can add a bit more of this ink to really make it pop out. Because this is much darker and much thicker than, uh, than graphite. And you can paint with this alone, but um, I kind of like to switch it up a bit. that and we can also do it inside so so these holes they're very dark so we could actually fill that in with this ink like I said before it's all about the dynamics and by dynamics I mean it goes from light to really dark and graphite allows us to do that but and this is perfectly black and this paper is white so you get some nice dynamic there contrasts and then inside here maybe we can add a little bit more Let's separate and then the mask should be more in front so we could add that as well like so we can do the same here it can be kind of loose with this as well we can add a strong silhouette around the entire Element here. Fill that in as well. And when you do this, you build more confidence. Do you allow yourself to really do things that you can't sort of erase or undo? Like this is not Photoshop, so. And I like this because this is um, it's a good exercise in building confidence and also working more with like fluidity. And this shoulder pad is in front of him, so we can also add a bit more line weight there. Like that, and then his jawline. And then inside, maybe a bit more. 
know, this intricate sort of design. Oh, that's kind of cool. We can make it go up here as well. Looks like a cross. It's happy accidents. It's all suggestive details. It's not exact like what this what this stuff is. But the the, the mind really um really helps sell it, you know, it, it helps um make sense of it. Like that. And you can go back and forth, you know, you can try maybe filling in a bit more here. Like so. And so, um, like I said in the third tip is to really, really try and uh, do some studies, like watch, watch some more, um, um, you know, visuals um, from, from, from games, you know, concept art and uh, also just regular master paintings and all that stuff. And you're really going to find a lot of really great um, inspiration and also study material that you can just, you know, practice from. And then you can you can take that and create your own designs. I mean, I've probably gotten lots of inspiration from like Warhammer and stuff here. I have it in my head because that's how I build, um, how you, that's how you build a visual library. And so that's just a few ways of making your drawings look, you know, more cool and pop out a bit more. Alrighty guys, it was nice having you around. Thanks for your support. And remember to subscribe and stay tuned for my upcoming online course the aspiring concept artist. Good luck with your drawings. Take it easy.